I, I'm told that we do have uh, lawyer Martin Pebu on the line for some clarity or some legal perspective to what has been happening. It's been a long legal day. Mr. Pebu, good afternoon, and thank you for joining us on TV3. Yeah, good afternoon. Yeah, is this Martin? Yes, this is Martin. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. Okay, to, yes, to, yes. To, to start with, I'm sure you've been following proceedings at the Supreme Court. First of all, what would your uh, initial comments be about the uh, few issues that the judges heard? They went on recess, came back, gave a ruling. Then a second recess, came back, gave another ruling. And now the House, uh, I beg your pardon, the court has adjourned to the 11th of November. What are your preliminary uh, thoughts on today's proceedings? I was hoping today the decisions that the court would give would help bring a resolution of the constitutional crisis, meaning that the decision would be one that would at least appeal to the speaker in such a way that he would immediately want to uh, recall parliament, to summon parliament. But to the extent that his application to set aside the Supreme Court decision of 18th October was thrown out. That is to say, the court didn't agree that the court had done anything wrong. It appears to me that the speaker would also go into the constitution and there are few small uh, constitutional provisions to, you know, hit back at the Supreme Court. So it appears this, uh, I don't want to call it drama, maybe crisis. So it appears this constitutional crisis is not over yet. Mm. And the substant some of the substantive issues that were heard, or probably they may not be the substantive, but they were part of the, uh, the entire hearing process. One of it being the decision of the speaker's lawyer or the speaker asking the court to actually rescind their order to him, not to, uh, to the order of the Supreme Court to the speaker to stay execution. The court said that they disagreed with the speaker and that it was... Uh, not going to stand. What do you make of that particular ruling they gave? Yes, that is to say, when the speaker made a declaration of court, said the court had become vacant, and the Supreme Court said, no, it should be a state of execution, right? Yes. Yes, that, that is the heart of the matter. I was hoping that today the Supreme Court would have reversed this decision or done something that would appeal at least to the speaker. You see, in law, there are a thousand and one ways of killing a cat. So I was hoping that the speaker would come away with something. But this one, the speaker is lost totally. In circumstances where I think he could have won something. You see, Martin, let's be very clear. In the same law we are interpreting, the Constitution and all the laws, from where I stood, I could have given the speaker something. I wouldn't have thrown out the speaker's application. The same law that the Supreme Court judges used. I would have used the same, and I would have given the uh, speaker's, uh, what do you call it, lawyer something. You see, you do it in such a way that they too will feel a part of the process. But to totally dismiss the application, <laughs> I think it's likely that the speaker may not cooperate in opening parliament. You see, as we are doing, we are building a nation. You know, law, we call it. Uh, this is social engineering. You fashion laws to help build society. So if you look at that from the jurisprudential view, that law is used for social engineering, okay? Because there's that dispute, you see the speaker is peeved. So if you, and why is he peeved? The main thing that most lawyers, I'm going to use the one that is easier to explain, the one that most, most lawyers will agree, because there are other ones, lawyers will disagree. But the one that's easy to get many lawyers to agree is that on the 18th of October, the Supreme Court made the order that they are suspending the speaker's decision till they finish hearing the Supreme Court case. Now, that order that you are suspending the hearing, the, the, the speaker's decision, that his declaration of what is vacant, you are suspending that decision till you finish hearing the case, is too wide and too long so even if it takes three times, whatever, you know, until this pressure, Supreme Court cases take sometimes a year, two, etc., right? Even this one that they are trying to hear very expeditiously, you see we are coming back for judgment on the 11th of November. Certain things can happen, and maybe 11th of November, we may not have the judgment, etc. 
So what I expected was that they would have reviewed their decision and say, okay, they are no longer staying to the end of the key. They are countering that part out. And then after you, if you want that decision to stay, they should file a new application and serve the speaker. Then they will come back and argue fully why that order should be made to the end of the case. That one, most lawyers will agree. Listen, if you want to see how most lawyers will agree, you can check the 18th of October. When lawyer Abedu came for the stay of execution, he said he wants it for only 10 days. That is what we do in court. Every lawyer will tell you that when you come alone to the judge, when you come, what we call ex party, if you sue somebody, but you don't serve him when you want injunction or stay of execution, and you go alone to the judge, you don't tell the judge that you want me to give the order, the order will stay till the end of the case. Even if it's one year, two years, four years, ten years, it will stay. No. Usually, you ask the judge for only ten days, so that within the ten days, you try and go and find the other person to serve him. And this case, they didn't do so. I mean, the lawyer did the right thing. He said he wanted it for only 10 days. Then the Supreme Court didn't uh, restrict it to 10 days. He made it for the rest of the case. So that is that part that I would have reversed it and allowed the speaker to come and argue why he should not go to the end. So that way you get his buy-in. If you allow him to have his day in court on that order, you are giving him a, you are getting a buy-in because his lawyers will present a full argument. So there are those things that we could have used and all of that would have helped reduce the tension. But to have just thrown out the speaker's lawyer's uh, application, everything, hmm, it's likely lawyer Bagbin will find something in the Constitution and also show the Supreme Court that he also has power. So as it stands, it means that Parliament cannot sit, or the Speaker may not be able to recall Parliament because uh, a, a, from the last adjournment, we heard him give indications that because the case was in court, we probably would all have to wait and see. So up until the 11th of November, we shouldn't be expecting anything happening from Parliament. You would agree? Oh, okay. I, I, I didn't hear that part. I thought he said he was adjourning to me day to go and do consultations. I didn't hear that he said he wants the Supreme Court to finish hearing the case. Hey, then if that is so, then it means he will summon Parliament on the 11th of November because the court says that they will give judgment. Mm. They will deliver. Right. Wow. Yeah. So we still have about, let's say, today is 30th, maybe 12, 13 days to go. Yes. And, and maybe before you take leave of us, uh, one other issue that the lawyers raised, uh, that is the third year, sorry, lawyer for the speaker, was that they wanted justice. Ernest Jeu or Gaiu, I actually don't uh, have clarity on the pronunciation of his name, but he hey, was Gaiu. asking Gaiu, Gaiu. Gaiu. Okay, they were asking him to recuse himself from the uh, five-member panel, but after recess, when the judges returned, they dismissed that as well, and they were asking him to recuse himself because of his open, publicly known support for the NPP. In fact, he stood on a ticket of the NPP to campaign as a parliamentary candidate. And the, 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 the Chief Justice said that they do not agree with that call for him to recuse himself. Uh, as a lawyer, you agree with the court? No, 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 no. Martin, you know me. I'm sure <laughs> you know the answer. In a thousand years, I would never agree with the court. Look, the easiest the court would have done was to have sustained that objection and then simply replace uh, Justice Gaiwu. Of course, Gaiwu is a fine judge, etc. But like you said, he stood as a parliamentary candidate on the ticket of the NPP. So with this part of the record, the ordinary man hearing this, we see that, ah, then that's why the decision went where it went. So you see, when it comes to optics, it's very, 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 very important. The optics have to be right. There are over 10 other Supreme Court judges, so they should have just a, a, a recute that is guy who embrace on a different judge. Because once you allow him to sit, everybody will say, ah, because he's MPP. So the reason the court gave that parliament approved him, uh, with due respect, I don't agree. It doesn't look good. The optics look very, 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 very bad. Mm. Lawyer, thank you so much uh, for your time and uh, your thoughts on this very fluid subject. Martin Pebu is a private legal pr practitioner and I uh, was trying to help us make sense of what's happened in court.